Number two. The Buddha has preached the Dharma, the advantage of the teachings. The Buddha has preached the Dharma. If a Buddha comes but remains in meditation without expounding the Dharma, there will be no light of the Dharma, as if he has never come. For example, our great teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha, after attaining a perfect and complete enlightenment under the Bodhi tree in India, said, I have found the Dharma like Ambrosia. Profound, peaceful, transcendent, radiant, and uncompounded. If I expound it, no one will understand. So I shall remain silent here in the forest. Afterward, for seven weeks, he did not impart teachings until Brahma and Indra implored him to turn the wheel of the Dharma. When Shakyamuni Buddha attained enlightenment, he said, The Dharma is so profound that even if I expound it, no one will understand. So I shall remain silent in the forest without teaching. Why didn't he expound the Dharma? Because the Dharma is profound. This is a manifestation telling people how precious and profound the Dharma is, which needs to be requested. Brahma and Indra implored the Buddha to turn the wheel of Dharma. Why didn't the Buddha turn it? Because it requires conditions. Not to mention the Buddha turning the wheel of Dharma, even for me to come to Beijing and impart a few teachings, it requires profound conditions. Furthermore, if those who hold the Dharma don't expound it, it's difficult to directly benefit sentient beings. For example, Venerable Smirta Jana from India, in order to save his mother, who had been reborn in an ephemeral hell, set out for Tibet. However, after his translator died on the journey, he wandered in calm region. Unable to speak the language, he became a shepherd and eventually passed away without vastly benefiting beings with the Dharma. Later, when Venerable Atisha arrived in Tibet and heard of this, he cried out, How sad! Tibetans, your merit is so shallow! Among the Panditas in India, East or West, no one can surpass Smitijana. He joined his palms and wept. Now, the Buddha Shakyamuni has turned the wheel of the Dharma on three levels and manifested inconceivable forms according to the capacities of sentient beings, maturing and liberating them through the nine vehicles of his teachings. Among the great teachers of the past, many did not turn the wheel of the Dharma due to the lack of conditions. Nobody requested them to teach, or, as in this story, there was no translator. Thus, nobody could understand their language. In these situations, although the Buddha has come to the world, he did not teach. Number three. The Buddha's teachings still exist. The advantage of the time. Although the Buddha has turned the wheel of the Dharma three times, if the Dharma has already vanished, after a few thousand years, the Dharma will disappear. Now, the Dharma is still available. Currently, it should be the beginning of the Dharma-ending age. 
We haven't reached the terrible era of the final 500 years yet, when people can only chant Amitabha Buddha, but nobody understands the Dharma. There are still many Buddhasattvas preaching the Dharma in the world, so we are not that miserable, only having the option of chanting Amitabha Buddha. But eventually, that era, when only Amitabha Sutras and the chanting of Amitabha Buddha are left, will come. At that time, nobody will understand the Dharma. Yet, there will still be very few people who believe in Buddhism. They may not know what to chant, but they know Amitabha Buddha and the existence of the Pure Land. With this little merit, they can still go there. That will be the final era during which no one preaches the Dharma. Now, there are still teachers preaching the Dharma. If the Dharma disappears and the fruit period, transmission period and symbol period are all complete, it would not benefit sentient beings. This is just like a school. Although it once enrolled students, it now has closed and stopped accepting students. Thus, children cannot benefit anymore. Now, the Buddha's teachings still exist, so we have the advantage of the time. Number 4. The Dharma can still be followed. The advantage of one's own condition. Although the Buddha has appeared, preached the Dharma, and the Dharma still exists, if one hasn't taken refuge in Buddhism, it won't be of any benefit. Now we have already embraced Buddhism. Regardless of our initial intentions, we will eventually understand the meaning of the Dharma. Therefore, our own conditions are complete, referred to as the Dharma can still be followed. Number 5. Being accepted by a qualified teacher. The advantage of a compassionate teacher. Even if the first four conditions are met. All these conditions are indispensable. If one's own condition, as well as the first four conditions, are met, but one only takes refuge superficially, though they may think they have taken refuge in the three jewels and become a Buddhist. The Sangha is a community rather than an individual. Many people have become a Buddhist for several years, but they don't understand anything. They may know how to bow and offer incense, but they haven't kept the five precepts, let alone understand deeper teachings. They don't understand the truth of suffering, haven't heard about the truth of suffering, the suffering of change, and the pervasive suffering. So, they are not qualified either. If one has the first four advantages and has taken refuge in Buddhism, but tries to study on their own by reading a book, they will also run into problems. Over time, they may be influenced by devils without realising it, believing that they are on the right path. If one only takes refuge superficially without being guided by a qualified teacher, one will remain ignorant of the essence of the Dharma. Now that we are fortunate to be accepted by a compassionate teacher, we have the advantage of a compassionate teacher, also known as being accepted by a qualified teacher. Why are these conditions called circumstantial advantages? 
because they depend on external factors. Now that you have all these advantages, you should cherish, rejoice and be diligent. The five individual advantages and the five circumstantial advantages are all indispensable. If any one of them is absent, you will not be able to study Buddhism. Even if you have all the five circumstantial advantages, including being accepted by a qualified teacher, if your sense faculties are incomplete, or if your lifestyle conflicts with your Dharma practice, you still cannot learn the Dharma. The Degenerate Age of Five Defilements Number 1. Defilement of the Error This refers to the error with frequent disasters and misfortune. Many disasters occur, and future disasters will be very severe and frequent. The pollution is too severe. Nowadays, Chinese people are creating too much negative karma. That's why disasters occur frequently. Number 2. Defilement of sentient beings. This means that sentient beings have inferior qualities and decreasing merits and experience more suffering than happiness. Nowadays, beings' merits are rapidly decreasing, especially in the last two to three decades, so it's hard to say whether science is good or bad. Number three, defilement of lifespan. This means that sentient beings experience shortened lifespans due to creating negative karma. The lifespan is uncertain, so it's called the defilement of lifespan. Number four, defilement of views. This refers to the decline of virtues among monastics. Now, in the Dharma ending age, even among monastics, it's hard to find those who practice and guide sentient beings with right understanding and views. I'm not saying there is none, but the number is decreasing. In the Dharma ending age, even among monastics, there are very few with right understanding and views. Many people blindly believe in causality, cling to fame and fortune, and enjoy worldly activities without earnestly engaging in Dharma practice. Even when it comes to Dharma practice, they don't practice the path of liberation or the Buddhasattva path. At most, they practice the path of the human and heavenly realms. Nowadays, those who abandon evil and practice the path of the human and heavenly realms are already considered good monastics. This is the situation in the Dharma ending age. The Dharma has declined, leading to the defilement of views. Disputes over views arise, and there's no standard. In the past, there were many great teachers who collectively established a standard of right understanding and views. Wherever they went, they supported each other fostering a good Dharma atmosphere. Wherever a student went, they could always learn right understanding and views, as the views were consistent in different places. Nowadays, this is rare. One group may explain something in this way, while another group may interpret it differently, causing confusion. Many views are mixed together, making it difficult to discern which one is right. 
since there are too many wrong views, it's hard for lay people to discern the right view. This is what is meant by the defilement of views. Number five, defilement of afflictions. This refers to the gradual decline of virtuous deeds among lay people. Regardless of their beliefs, lay people are often bound by mental afflictions or disorders. Nowadays, many people suffer from mental disorders, and every individual may experience them at some point in their lives. Most people can recover from mental disorders, just like recovering from physical illnesses. However, some of them cannot recover, and that would be terrifying. Both the external world and the minds of ordinary beings are filled with greed, anger and ignorance. Although we are in the degenerate age of the five defilements, the Buddha's teachings still exist and the Dharma of transmission and realization hasn't vanished. Since we have such a precious opportunity, we should practice virtuous deeds. In fact, anyone who dedicates their time can practice virtuous deeds. If you don't understand the degenerate age of five defilements, you won't feel urgent. Some people are just aimlessly passing their time and creating worldly karma. Simply put, due to the strong karma of ordinary beings, even if they realize their mistakes, they don't want to change. Happiness is the hardest to endure. When delicious food is served, your mouth waters. It's very difficult to resist. Suffering can be endured, because even if you don't want to endure it, you have to. But it's very hard to resist happiness, and that's why the practice of Buddhism is not easy. For you who have been living in the secular world for a long time, it's best to start by practicing asceticism to deal with your karmic habits. Your karmic habits are too strong. To remove the habitual attachment to the five desires, the best way is to practice asceticism. Why become a monastic? Becoming a monastic means letting go of all worldly wealth and fame and practicing asceticism to deal with karmic habits. If you don't deal with your karmic habits, you won't eliminate them. How can you eliminate them? And if you don't eliminate them, you will experience greater suffering later on a thousand or ten thousand times greater than your current happiness. This is the reality. Do you want to attain liberation? We have been studying here for several years, teaching you every day how to cultivate renunciation and generate buddhicitta. Merely talking about the wisdom of emptiness is ineffective. You need to start by disciplining yourself with precepts. Merely saying, I understand emptiness, without wanting to observe precepts, won't work. Karma is too powerful. The main problem is that you haven't realized how powerful karma is. For countless culpas, we have been trapped in samsara, and the karma we have accumulated is not just as thick as three feet of ice, it's even thicker than 3,000 feet. So, it takes time to melt them away. Do you think you can attain enlightenment without renouncing worldly life? It's impossible. 
Even Buddhas and Buddhasattvas from ten directions have renounced worldly life countless times before gradually practicing the Buddhasattva path, staying in impure environments, yet remaining pure.